Flooding causes more property damage than any other natural disaster. The National Flood Insurance Program enables property owners in participating communities to purchase insurance from the federal government against losses from flooding. Participation in the National Flood Insurance Program is based on an agreement between local communities and the federal government that requires the community to adopt and enforce floodplain management ordinances to reduce future flood risks. Approximately 90% of all structures in Dare County are located within the floodplain. It's very important that you know and understand your flood insurance policy. A basic flood insurance policy is only for your structure, and that includes appliances, fixed cabinetry, bookcases. It does not include contents or personal property. You'll have to carry a separate rider for personal property coverage, and that can include things like clothing, furniture, there can be additional coverage for up to $2,500 for special things like jewelry and artwork. Flood insurance is not a valued policy. This means that it covers you for actual cash value or replacement cost, but it will not pay the full amount just because that's what your policy says. It's very important to keep your receipts for all purchases and receipts for any improvements done to your home. Those receipts can be used by an adjuster during a claims process. A national flood insurance policy does not pay more than the policy. The maximum coverage available for any structure is $250,000. When choosing a deductible for your flood insurance policy, pay a little bit more for a lower deductible. The lower deductible will help you in the event of making a claim. Once you've experienced a loss, you don't want to have to worry about covering a higher deductible. There'll be more important things for you to take care of. Read the claims handbook. Each year when you get your copy of your flood insurance policy, you get a copy of this flood insurance claim handbook. This is a very important document. Take a few minutes to read through it, familiarize yourself with it. You want to know what's in it, so if you do have a flood, you're not having to go back through and search for it. If you do need to file a claim, the first thing you need to do is contact your insurance agent or your insurance company and they'll get you started with the paperwork to start your claim process. Separate the damaged property from the salvageable property. If you can, take a video or pictures. They'll be very important as you proceed through the claims process and help with the details. If you have to take out carpet and wall coverings, be sure to send a sample and save that to show to your adjuster. If you hire a cleanup company, make sure that you get the copy of the contract and have your insurance agent review that before you sign the copy. Make a list of your contents and what's been damaged. It's going to be very important to have details if you can write down the brand, the model, the serial number, when you purchased it, and how much you paid for it. That'll be important information that you share with your adjuster because you'll be paid the actual cash value for your damaged contents. Last, make sure that you document the damage to your structure. Go around and point out anything that you have to the adjuster. You want to make sure that what you're seeing is what you show to him when you file your claim. A flood can happen anywhere at any time. Floodwaters don't follow a line on a map. Make sure that you have, get, or understand your flood insurance well in advance of hurricane season. It takes 30 days for a policy to become active. If you already have a policy, make sure it accurately reflects your needs. If you've done renovations or recently purchased new furniture for your home, make sure your policy reflects those adjustments in value. Before a flood, make sure that you have an accurate inventory of your home. This can be done with photographs, video, or a combination of both. Make sure you keep a copy of that inventory off-site, and then make sure you keep another copy somewhere accessible within your home that is least subject to flooding. Those documents will be very important for you in the event of making a claim. After a flood event, when your adjuster arrives at your property, make sure you ask for ID. Get a copy of their business card. You want to be able to contact them after they leave. Understand that all licensed adjusters are licensed through the state of North Carolina and they should be able to provide proof of this. Review all the items that you've documented as damaged. Make sure that you can explain to your adjuster the value of all of these items. Know that you may request an advance on your contents coverage. This will be taken out of your final payment, but you are entitled to receive this money and it can help you immediately recovering from a flood. 
Your claim must include a proof of loss. This documentation is required to be in the hands of your insurance company 60 days following your initial filing. In some cases where there's widespread loss, there may be an extension. Check with your insurance company about this. Remember, you need to seek out a policy, know your insurance policy, and provide accurate and timely information in the event of a claim. Make sure you contact your insurance agent now, before you see your couch floating through your kitchen.